Hello and welcome to a new video of Molecular Mindset. Your go-to channel for all things related to molecular simulations and machine learning. In today's video, we're diving into the details of force field data files, uncovering the challenges of manually generating them, and, most importantly, presenting you with a game-changing solution that will save you significant amounts of time. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced researcher in the field of molecular dynamics, this approach will be a great addition to your data file generation workflow. We're unveiling a method that will streamline the process, allowing you to generate data files with ease and precision. Say goodbye to hours of manual labor and hello to rapid, efficient simulations. And hey, before you click away, here's a little incentive to stick around till the end. We're kicking off a challenge where you can snag a sweet discount on our advanced molecular dynamics course. You don't want to miss out on this opportunity. So stay tuned, and let's make some molecular simulations together. On the left, we have the ethanol molecule, and on the right, its corresponding LAMPS data file. This file contains crucial topological information and interaction parameters essential for simulations. Extracting these details from literature can be incredibly challenging due to the system's complexity and coherent parametrization. These factors directly influence the precision and fidelity of the resulting simulations. Take the data file for ethanol molecule, for example, with its 9 atoms, 8 bonds, 13 angles, and 12 dihedrals. Additionally, there are 5 atom types, each demanding distinct interaction parameter descriptions. These parameters encompass coefficients and equations crucial for calculating bond, angle, and dihedral energies. Additionally, the data file comprises atom-specific details like mass, charge, and XYZ coordinates. Sections dedicated to bonds, angles, and dihedrals specify their respective IDs, types, and participating atoms, offering a comprehensive snapshot of molecular interactions. Creating this file becomes increasingly arduous as the number of atoms and system complexity grows. We can streamline and automate this process using open-source tools. By harnessing the power of these tools, we can expedite data file generation, reduce manual effort, and ensure accuracy and consistency in our simulations. In this video we will present a tutorial on using the Molecular Simulation Design Framework or MOSDEF for short to generate a LAMPS data file in less than 5 minutes. Basically these framework allow us to generate a data file with force field parameters for various system of interest using only the smile strings of the molecule. This framework uses three main modules, mBuild, FOIR, and GMSO. mBuild is responsible for generating the configurations of interest. It generates the coordinates for the defined number of atoms in the system. FOIR is in charge of finding the parameters related to the different combinations of bonds, angles, and so on. Finally, GMSO is in charge of putting everything together, the configurations from mBuild and the parameter form FOIR. Using the smile string of a molecule and this framework, we can generate the simulation files required to run simulations with LAMPS, GROMAX, HUMD, and other programs. Additional links are provided in the video's description. You can visit them to learn more detailed information about the framework and to find tutorials focused on mBuild and FOIR. Let's start with the hands-on tutorial. First, open the link in the description of the video to go to the GitHub repository with all the code discussed in this video. Additionally, open a new terminal and go to the path where you want to work with this project. Copy the link of the repo and clone it using the terminal. The first thing we are going to do is install the Conda environment following the instructions presented in the repository. Before installing the environment, we have to change the Conda Forge channel and its priority. After that, we can run this command to create the environment. You can change the name of the environment in the first line of this file. I already have the Conda environment to I am going straight to activating the environment. Following that, we'll proceed to open the tutorial notebook right here. One method to achieve this is by running code vomand to fully access and explore these files using VS Code. Once the notebook is open and the kernel has been set to the recently installed Conda environment, we're good to go. First import import and mbuild and foyer, which are the modules required for the framework, import numpy and matplotlib for plotting and also some rdkit modules for visualization. The magic of this framework is that you only need the smile strings of the molecule that you have interest in order to generate the data file for it. 
In this case, we will use ethanol as an example and the small strings for ethanol is CCO. Now that the SNILE string is defined we can use our dkit to visualize a linear representation of the molecule. Now we can define the specific parameters for the data file of the simulation that we want to run. First, we define the SMILE string for the molecule. Then define the size of the system in nanometers. And define the number of molecules we want inside that box. In this case, for as an example, we're just going to use one. Also, we're going to specify the force field we want to use to describe the interactions of the atoms. By default, mBuild uses the Optimized Potentials for Liquid Simulations OPLS. Additional force fields can be added and used in these framework. Finally, we define a name for the file that we want to generate. After that, we are going to run this code. And here, we're going to create a non-parameterized system. This tells mBuild to create a structure using the smile strings we gave to it. Here, we define our box using the box size that we defined and then we fill that box with the non-parameterized molecules that we generated here before. Then, we add the number of molecules that we define. In this case, I specified one. We define the box and an overlap parameter, which takes care of overlapping problems in dense systems. After that, we define the force field, which again in this case we're using the OPLS force field. The force field is applied to the non-parameterized systems. And finally, using mBuild, we can run this code to generate the LAMPS data file. You can change the format in this code to generate the data file for Gromax and other engines. Now we run the code to generate the data file. Finally we open the data file to visualize its content. Typically, our focus lies on systems characterized by a substantially greater number of molecules. Let's establish a computational function to determine the quantity of molecules necessary to achieve a liquid density corresponding to the molecule of interest. The function takes in parameters such as the desired density, the length of one side of the simulation box, and the smile string representing the molecule of interest. To accomplish this, we first extract the molecular weight of the specified molecule using the RDKit library. Then, we determine the volume of the simulation box and convert it into meters. We calculate the molarity with the density and molecular weight. Leveraging Avogadro's number, we ascertain the number of molecules required to achieve the desired density within the given volume. The function provides an option for verbose output, displaying the calculated number of molecules and the total number of atoms if desired. Finally, an example utilizing ethanol, CCO, with a specified density and box size, demonstrates how to use the function and print the resulting number of molecules. Now we can generate the LAMPS data file using the calculated number of molecules and the same code we discussed previously on this video. In general, this code utilizes mBuild to create an unparameterized representation of the molecule of interest using its smile string. Then, define a cubic box based on the specified size. Fill the box with the molecule of interest, adjusting the number of molecules to match the desired density. Apply the chosen force field to the system to parameterize it, creating a PARM structure. Write the parameterized system to a LAMPS data file using builds functionality, specifying atom style, unit style, and whether to use rigid body torsions. This code efficiently automates the process of generating a LAMPS data file for a molecular system, facilitating subsequent simulations and analysis. Once our LAMPS data file is generated, we'll verify that the number of atoms matches the previously calculated count. Next, we'll delve into the provided LAMPS input file from the repository. In this section of the input file, we'll focus on defining the interaction types, ensuring they correspond to the parameters specified in the generated data file. Additionally, we'll confirm that the read data command references the correct file. The subsequent steps involve running a minimization process to reduce the potential energy of the system, followed by an NPT simulation to equilibrate the simulation volume. We'll employ a time step of 1 femtosecond, running the simulation for 500 picoseconds or 500,000 steps. Finally, we'll write a data file capturing the final configuration post-minimization and volume equilibration. With the LAMPS input file prepared, we'll open a terminal in the working directory and execute the input file using LAMPS. For those without LAMPS installed, we recommend watching our previous video tutorial on installing and utilizing LAMPS and VMD for molecular dynamics visualizations. Upon completing our simulation, 
we reopen the notebook used for file generation and proceed to import the LAMPS log file module for streamlined data extraction. This module will help us streamline the process of retrieving information from the simulation log file. Initiating with the definition of the log file path, we load the file through the recently imported LAMPS log module. Utilizing the get underscore keyword command, we can see the available variables for extraction. Our focus in this tutorial narrows to two key variables, density and time. We proceed to extract these variables, crucial to our current analysis objectives. Subsequently, we calculate the average density derived from the simulation data. Our computed value of 0.77 aligns closely with the anticipated density of 0.79 grams per cubic centimeter. A percentage error analysis is conducted to gauge our precision, yielding a value of 1.56%. Notably, this error is subject to reduction through extending simulation duration. Following this assessment, a visualization journey commences. Plotting density against time offers insight into density fluctuations over the simulation duration, eventually converging toward the anticipated value. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you for your time and attention. We hope you found the information valuable. To show our appreciation and make it worth your while, we're offering a challenge with prizes for the first 20 comments with correct answers on this video. The challenge entails replicating the process demonstrated in this video for generating LAMPS data files, but with a different sets of molecules. Your task is to equilibrate the density of each system and calculate the percentage error compared to known values. The molecules for this challenge are toluene, acetone, acetyl acetate, dimethyl sulfoxide, and dimethyl formamide. To participate, post a comment with the density and error percentage obtained by you. By doing so, you'll have a chance to receive a 50% discount on our upcoming masterclass on advanced molecular dynamic simulations and enhanced sampling techniques. If this opportunity aligns with your interests, we encourage you to submit your answers in the video comments. Thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and share any suggestions for future content or improvements. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.